Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. Today I wanna to talk to you about using a VDB object in Redshift and Cinema 4D. So if you've never used a VDB before, it stands for Voxel Database, and it's just a file that you bring into one of your render engines. And a lot of the times they're used for fog or smoke or clouds. And the nice thing about them is you can play with all the parameters in your render engine to change things like the color, density, the quality of them. And they also interact with your objects and with any lighting that you do. So it's a really powerful system. And we just launched the VDB Clouds Pack with 100 realistic clouds if you want to check that out. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D. And right now all I have is a Redshift Dome Light and we have an HDRI loaded. So we're going to add that VDB by using a Redshift Object Redshift Volume. If we put that in our scene, we can see that we have a path option here and that's where we're gonna load our VDB. VDBs come in different qualities or resolutions. So we have four different resolutions for every cloud. So for 62, we have a .10, a .05, .03, and a .02. So the .10 is the lower resolution one if you have these clouds in the background or if you don't want them to, uh, to take so much time to render. If you wanna do a hero cloud or something closer up, you would use the .02, that's the highest resolution one. So we'll just load that one up. All right, so we have this little box representation down here. If we want a more accurate representation, we can go to display and we can go to preview and change that to points. And under the points, you can see some points in here. We can click that maximum points and we can make that 100 and we'll get a better visual representation of what this VDB is gonna look like. Now, right now it's very small. I added a cube in here just to show you the scale. If you wanna scale this up, uh, go to the coordinates tab and under the scale options, here's where you're gonna to wanna to do that. So I'm gonna make these 15 by 15 by 15. All right, so I hit render and we don't see anything on that VDB. And that's because we need a material. So we're gonna go to create and uh, there's a whole section for redshift materials and at the bottom is a volume material. And that's the one we're gonna create and throw onto that volume object. And we're still not gonna be able to see anything, I'm assuming, because if we go into our texture here, let's double click it, here are all of our options for the VDB. And what it needs is a channel so that it can be seen. And right now the channel is blank. So to find out what channels are included in this VDB, we can go back to our Redshift volume and under the object, we have an information tab. And right now it says that the only channel is a density one. So sometimes there will be other channels. If you're doing fire, there might be a temperature channel or something like that. But right now all we have is density. So we can copy and paste this density text into this channel, or we can just click on this little twirl down, go to Redshift volume and click click on the density. And if we do that, now we have it rendering, but it doesn't quite look right. It's all black. And that's because any light that we have in our scene is not actually lighting this. It's not recognizing it. And we need to go into the lights and go under the volume tab. And under here, we have a contribution scale. And that just means that right now it's contributing zero light to that VDB. If we kick this all the way up to one. Now it's gonna be lighting this VDB cloud and we should get a nice cloud render here. And now let's check out all of our options here. So most of the options that you're going to play around with to dial in this cloud are gonna be in the texture itself. And we have scatter and absorption. These will be kind of the main ones. And also under the advanced tab, we do have some remapping options as well. So the way that I like to think about this is that the scatter is the diffuse. And by increasing it, you're going to be making it brighter and then the absorption is sort of similar to an opacity or transparency. And if you increase it, it's gonna get more dense. So if we do that, it's gonna turn it into more of a dark billowing smoke. And if we go the other way, it's going to become more and more transparent as we go. It's also gonna get lighter, so we'll have to tweak some of the settings. But one of the reasons I put this cube in here is so that you can see that we're getting a little bit more transparent as we go this way and you're gonna be able to see through and it's cutting out this cloud a little bit. And again, if we go the other direction, it's going to make it more dense. And one thing to note is that you'll probably wanna keep the scatter coefficient and the absorption coefficient at a similar level if we're going up, and that way it's going to be a more of a balanced look. So that is the basic kind of the get started in Redshift on how to get your clouds to render. And the rest of it's sort of just playing around with a lot of these ramps and the settings and playing around with uh, the lighting to get the look that you want. Another thing you can do is under tint, we can add color by using our tint. It'll probably be pretty blown out if we leave it this way, but if we take our scatter coefficient and bring that back down, 
It'll get a little bit darker and you can get some really, really fun, more artistic results. So I hope you learned something new and I hope that if you haven't used VDVs before, you'll realize that there's nothing to be uh, intimidated about. They're really easy to use and super fun. And I hope you guys check out that VDB Clouds Pack and I'm gonna stop saying VDB now. Okay, bye.